Hello there. This is Jane Civit again to welcome you to something brand new for us. It's, the universe has been so exquisite recently, bringing me the most amazing people to meet and to share with you. And yet another person came to me recently saying, do you know about this man? Do you know about Shavasti? Have you heard about Shavasti? And I, and I wrote back quickly, no, but tell me more. And, and so she went on to share that there has been a wonderful man that has made a tremendous influence on her life and that I must meet him. She had met me only through live streaming, other events, and she said, and this was the next layer for her and for her evolution and that she was so excited, she couldn't wait to introduce me as well. And so 10 days ago, I think it was, uh, we contacted one another and we had a great meeting. And so now we are having these conversations here. So I would like to introduce to you my very new friend, Shavasti. Hi, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. <laughs> Hi, Shavasti. Thank you so much. You are in Bangkok right now, is that correct? Yes, that's right. I'm in Bangkok at the moment. So it's an amazing world that you and I can talk. Here I am in California. You are in Bangkok. And we are having the beginnings of these conversations. So thank you so much for joining me. And thank goodness for technology as well. Talking across the world's largest ocean, the Pacific Ocean. So, yeah. we're, we're, you know, I could put a message in the bottle and toss it <laughs> in the sea and see if it eventually washes up on the shores of Los Angeles somewhere. Laguna, <laughs> is it Laguna Beach, is it? Uh, near where yeah, you are? that's yes. right. Well, your messages have definitely been reaching the shores all around the world for many years. And I am so excited to meet you. I, you know, beyond our friend, our mutual friend that we know mostly through the internet, and she's worked with you as well, I have been hearing from others how amazing some of the work is that you have been doing and you've been a part of for many, many years. And I would just love for you to tell me just a little bit more about who you are. Your website says you're a seer and a mystic. I know that you do some healing, but you're also an author of six books, which is a quite an accomplishment with all the other work that you've been doing, thousands of workshops. and so. Not quite thousands, a few hundred. Okay. All right. I saw something like 650 sessions or something like that, but I mean, if you, you know, that's... Oh, I, I've, done, I've, done, I've done somewhere between six and 7,000 uh, private sessions and... Uh, something like 450 workshops uh, worldwide. It's still uh, a lot. Yeah, it is, it is, it is a lot. Um, yeah, for many years, so since about uh, 1997, 1998, I got involved in a body of work that's called Family Constellations. I'm not the only person that does that work. There are many people across the world who learned from the founder of that work called Bert Hellinger. Um, and so I did some training with Bert Hellinger, but most of my training was done with other individuals in the Netherlands and uh, some in Germany and a little bit in the United States. This was back in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. So that was then my, my uh, main work for 15, 16 years. And I did literally hundreds of workshops, uh, weekend workshops with that. And it's really looking at the wounding that we are born into. So a family story that's actively being told, a family story that's actively being experienced that we suddenly appear in as we're born into this world. So it's looking at what we've inherited from our parents, from our grandparents, our great-grandparents. And science now, through the new science of epigenetics, is beginning to realize that in fact feelings and trauma and phobias and all sorts of things are passed down through genetic memory to the to the following generations. And so with this work, with family constellation work, we're looking at what we've actually inherited from our ancestors and, and finding solution to that, healing solutions. So that was my main body of work. But of course, I've also been involved in the healing arts, so shamanism, and also energy healing for many years as well. So the work I do at the moment is not exclusive to family constellations, but is inclusive of because this is a very big spiritual dimension to my work now. Mm. Wow, excellent. So can I just ask you just, just for a little bit about you? You were also known as John L. Payne. 
Yes. Uh -huh. Is that correct? Yes. That's so right. when you were John, when you were John Payne, and you were John Payne as a little boy, was this part of your knowing? Did you know this was something that was going to be awakening within you? Um, I was psychically aware when I was a child, um, and so I've always been aware of uh, nature spirits. I've always had a special relationship to animals, been able to communicate with them, um, and so my world has always been beyond what we see with the physical eyes. And I found it rather odd that other people were not aware of this. I found it rather odd that people were not aware that the dead were around us all the time. I found it odd that people were not aware that a tree had consciousness or that the earth had consciousness. I found it odd that people didn't know that they could have a conversation with a river or a stream or a mountain. And there was a process through which I started to lose much of that because it was dismissed as being fantasy. You know, children have imaginary friends. And I, I sit here today as a 53 year old and say it's not an imaginary friend. They're not imaginary friends. They are real friends. They're spirit friends that come with us. So I've had that. In fact, before I even got into family constellation work, I was a um, I was a living room psychic doing tarot readings for people, but ah. what, what happened with that is that I, I began to get bored with it. I thought, well, you know, if one more person comes to me and asks me, when am I going to meet the man of my dreams, I'm just going to shoot myself because it's just <laughs> same, same, same every day. Yeah. And so this, this awakening started within me where I was more interested in... Um, working with individuals who wanted to work with themselves rather than just be told something. So then I started to um, investigate different therapy forms and because of the trauma in my own childhood, I was also in need of therapy as well. So that's how my world changed. So I went into therapy, then I started learning different modalities. So then my work changed from doing tarot readings and um, um, just giving people basic information to really working with individuals on, on a healing path. And as they say, the rest is history. That was 20 years ago. So there's been a beautiful evolution that we can all, that many of us can relate to, you know, losing that, that childhood wonder and that connectivity. There's a lot of people out there that have that, that are so sad that they have, they have lost that spark inside of them. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of us seem to be waking up right now and you are addressing all of that. And is there, in your work with, with family constellations and beyond, do you address that? Do, uh, when we were, let's say, we're in a workshop with you, do you work with people about that part of loss with a, that each person? And many parts. I think for all of humanity, for all of us, one of our deepest wounds is the loss of innocence. And our innocence can be lost in many, many different ways. There are very clear ways in which we can lose our innocence, and that's through the experience of violence or sexual abuse, verbal violence when we grow up in a household where the marriage of the parents is not a happy one and there's lots of fighting and arguing. That's very tough on a child system. Young children, we don't have really any defense. In fact, there are um, there's an opening that remains in the chakras and still until we start to develop seals in them. And so if you're a young child of two or three years old and your parents are shouting at each other or bickering or bitching at each other or, or just being unpleasant to one another, that's felt by the child very deeply. And so we begin to lose our innocence. So the magical world, the paradise that we're born into, and the paradise is really formed of what I call the original holy trinity of mother, father, and child, that begins to shatter. And the other way in which we begin to lose that is through the images that are projected onto us. And so for many of us, the moment we're born, literally the moment we're born, as soon as it's determined it's a girl, it's a boy, there's often an image there. He will grow up to run his father's business. He will grow up to follow in his father's footsteps. She will grow up to marry herself a good man and be a good mother. Well, who knows? And so those images start. So it's not only 
um, gender images, but also there are traditions in the family, whether the, the traditions be religious or um, lifestyle or career-wise, etc. Um, so there are a lot of images, and we begin to um, drown in those. I remember as a child, I wanted to do um, the home economics and uh, cookery classes at school, and I was told, absolutely not. That's only for girls. Really? With all the great that. chefs that are out there in the world, I'm so surprised. Uh, well, this happened yes. in the nineteen. This happened in the nineteen sixties. Right, I went right. Into quite conservative British schooling, so um, yes, that's changed nowadays. It's quite yes. the opposite, you know. Um, so yeah, so, so we drown under all of these images. So it's not only direct trauma, but it's also the indirect stuff. Every time we're told no, and these images that are projected onto us, girls are going to be a certain way, boys are going to be a certain way, and then there are loyalties to our clan, to our class, to our background, our heritage, our religion, our race, our ethnicity, all those sorts of things. And we're taught we're literally taught no child is born into this world being a misogynist or being a misandrist or being racist or sexist or homophobic. All those behaviors are, they are learnt behaviors. They don't come naturally to us. We love the world when we come into yes. it. Yes. So when, so if, when we come to workshop, we'll be talking about that. But now in these conversations that you and I are going to have, would you like to address some of these issues? Do we talk about some of these um, topics? Would you like to do that? You mean in what terms of um, in our in conversations? The yes, in our, absolutely. We can we can do we can talk about them in our conversations to come in the next few episodes of the conversations mm -hmm. with Shavasti and Jane Sive. We can do that, and then we can go further and deeper into these conversations, perhaps with with workshops to come. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. That sounds great. Okay, so I would just like to thank you and invite our our friends all around the world to join with us in these conversations. Is there anything else you would like to tell them about what they might expect when you and I are having dialogue here, Shavasti? Um, in terms of working with me in a workshop, or really any environment, but especially in the workshop, it's really important to me that a safe atmosphere is created. And so although I go deep with individuals, it's really about looking at the truth because so many of us, and I include myself in that, so work is ongoing. I'm not sitting here as a saint who is completely resolved with everything. That would be insane for me to claim that. It's really about facing the truth of who we are. And most of us spend a lot of our time avoiding ourselves mm -hmm. because there's a deep, deep fear that somewhere along the run, uh, somewhere along the line there is something wrong with us. So many of us have that deep belief that there is something wrong with me and I need to fix it. And so part of my work is to really face that with gentleness and within a safe atmosphere to face the things that we fear facing that might be true about us. All of us have a secret fear. We secretly fear that this thing, whatever it might be, might actually be true about us. That we're unlovable, or that we're unworthy, or that we're ugly, or that we're not enough. And so the work is an invitation to let's just meet that in openness and see what happens. And that's where the magic is. And so for me, my work is always an invitation. It's not about what you have to do. It's not about what you must do. It's not about what you've got to understand. It's an invitation to the presence of yourself and to meet that which perhaps you've been afraid to meet. And I'm saying to you, it won't kill you. It will liberate you. That's the invitation. Well, I look forward to that invitation, and I accept it. And I wonder if there are also people out there that are um, afraid to meet that invitation to find out if, how truly magnificent they are, too. If it could go that, that direction as well. That, that's a, that makes people get afraid. What does that mean for me to be so magnificent? Right? 
So I think absolutely. I look forward to this, Shavasti, and we will continue on. Right now, if people want information for, about you, they can go to shavasti.com, and that's S-H-A-V-A-S-T-I.com for more information, as well as Streaming for the Soul, for more information on you and your books and, and your work and where they can see all of these wonderful VODs that we're going to do, yes? Okay. okay, thank you, Jane. All right, we'll see you next time, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Aloha. <laughs>